this week in real pirate fall. What's up, everybody? It's time for another edition of This Week in Real Pirate Ball. Greg Mercer here with week number seven of the 2012 pirate season. And... Scene. I hate to keep using it as a top story, but this pirate offense has been the talk of the Pittsburgh media all week. At one point this week, nine Pirates players had a batting average that was less than their own weight. Sadly, there aren't any 400-pound dudes on the Pirates roster. But when I don't get them, I go berserk and act just like a 400-pound jerk. <laughs> team has the most Ks, the least walks, and is last in the National League in eight different offensive categories. GM Neil Huntington made a very depressing statement this week in which he said, Our options are limited when it comes to helping the lineup. There isn't a whole lot we can do. Listen, I'm glad Huntington did a good job in assembling a starting pitching staff so far, but the fact that he once again used a retread vet team building strategy which has never worked in the Pirates' favor shows the continued weakness of the team in the high minor league system. The first axe finally fell this week as one-time Pirate favorite Nate McClouth was designated for assignment. McClouth was hitting 140 and looked completely lost in pretty much every at bat certainly didn't come close to living up to this $1.75 million contract. After his one and a half good seasons as a pirate a few years ago, he hasn't resembled a decent major league player. I wish Nate the best because he gave Pirates fans quite a few good memories in those years, but after having so many poor seasons in a row, I think I have a good idea where he's going to end up next. The next stop is the east side. Klaus' spot on the roster was taken by Matt Haig, who is getting a second chance to stick at the major league level. Stuck on you, got this feeling down deep in my soul, and I just can't. The hit collector was hitting 278 in Triple A before the call up, but he only had one homer, and his OPS was only 658. Despite these numbers, manager Clint Hurdle has said that Haig will get some regular starting time to see what he can do. Think about it this way: he pretty much has to be better than McLeod, whether he hits home runs or not. As long as he continues to have good at-bats where he doesn't swing at garbage pitches and makes the pitcher work, which he seemed to do this week, it'll go a long way. Here's a head-scratching story that teased Pirates fans who may have thought that Clint Barmas was on his way out. Scratch your head with your leg. <laughs> <laughs> the Pirates traded cash to the Braves for shortstop Drew Sutton. The very next day, they traded him to the Rays for a cash or a player to be named later. This move made GM Neil Huntington resemble a fantasy baseball manager who couldn't decide on what guy he needed to add to the roster. Well, hopefully the Bucks get something good from Tampa Bay. The Rays obviously saw something because they put him in his starting lineup the next day. And of course, he went 6 for 15 in his first four games. The truth for the win! Good! Oh! It! It's time to give some praise to the Pirates bullpen for the work they've done so far this year. Going into Sunday, the pennant combined for a 2.36 ERA, which is best in the NL and third in the majors. They're collectively striking out almost one batter per inning, thanks in large part to Jason Grilly and Joe Hanrahan. When the Pirates do manage to score enough to be leading late, the bullpen has not allowed a loss when leading going into the eighth or ninth inning. All these stats tell you one thing. This bullpen isn't some plain Jane group of pitchers. <laughs> the pen's been dealing. Bunts will not survive. They all want wheel in. They're just whip you like that. Well, they must say, wins intact. Really Cruz and wants him again using hand in hand. Well, it's locked tight. You won't score. Yeah, it's locked tight. You won't score. Day or night. Day or night. Hit the pine. Day or shine. Speaking 
of the bullpen, the work of Jared Hughes has been good enough to make women scream for joy. He went to Jared. He went to Jared. The 26-year-old currently has a 1.13 ERA and 1.11 whip in 23 and a third innings of work. More importantly, the dude looks crazy out there. He's always got his mouth open, staring at the signs, and he looks like he's going to go mental like Gomer Pyle in Full Metal Jacket. I am in a world of sh**. We've seen relievers with odd quirks before, so as far as I'm concerned, he could be a flesh-eating zombie if he strands base runners and gets the Pirates out of middle inning jams. The Pirates hosted the New York Mets earlier this week. Let's check out the highlights through the use of the Greg Mercer Pirates machine. The Bucks won 5-4 in game number one. After allowing a four-run inning to the Mets early in the game, the Pirates fought back to tie the game on a two-run homer by Michael McHenry. A major blunder between outfielders allowed Neil Walker to reach third base in the eighth, and Clint Barmas got the game-winning RBI on a sacrifice fly. The Mets won game two, three to two. R.A. Dickey's knuckleball confounded the Bucks to the tune of 11 strikeouts. The rubber match on Wednesday was won by the Mets by a score of three to one. Charlie Morton pitched fairly well over seven innings, but a lackluster Pirates offensive lineup only produced five hits as Mets pitcher Jonathan Neese won his first game in over a month. This weekend, the Chicago Cubs came to town and brought a nine-game losing streak with them. On Friday, the Pirates won the battle of terrible offense in a one-to-nothing contest. Ryan Dempster and A.J. Burnett both pitched well with the looping Rod Baraja single producing the only run. Four members of the bullpen combined for three and two-thirds innings of two-hit baseball with six Ks to secure the win. The Bucks won Saturday's game 3-2 in peculiar fashion with a lot of help from the hapless Cubs. The Pirates cut down two runners at home plate, and the Cubs' inability to keep from allowing three base runners led to a game-winning hit-by-pitch taken by Matt Haig in the bottom of the ninth. The Pirates completed their first home sweep in over a year and a half in pounding the Cubs 10-4 on Sunday. Eric Bedard held the Cubs to only two hits in six innings, Pedro Alvarez hit a very lofty three-run homer early, and the Bucks put up six runs in the sixth inning. The Pirates took care of business in sweeping a really bad Cubs team to put themselves only one game under 500, but they're still having to win the hard way on most nights. As long as the starters don't suck, the team seems to find a way to win half the time either with a home run or capitalizing on a mistake by the other team. Pirates fans are hoping the new additions and the old subtractions to the lineup will continue to pay off as they face off against the NL Central leading Cincinnati Reds and their nemesis, the Milwaukee Brewers, next week. Well, that about does it for this week. Follow me on Twitter, at Mercerboy, for court postings and slapdash commentary on the Bucks. And thanks for watching this week in Real Pirate Ball. I'm Greg Mercer. Later.